This is a gear review of the Light Outdoors Titanium Wood Stove. At less than two pounds, this stove is an ultralight solution to heating your tent in the back country. It's also small enough to fit in your backpack. So come check out this really cool piece of gear. Hey guys, what is going on? Today we're talking about a really cool piece of gear. This is the Light Outdoors Titanium Wood Stove. Before I dive into this too far, guys, just a reminder to subscribe. If you haven't already, hugely appreciated from my side. If you have subscribed, share it with somebody who might enjoy. Thank you very much. Light Outdoors makes a really cool titanium wood stove. This thing packs away. We'll take a look at that here in a minute, plus assembly, but it packs away into your backpack. So you literally have a wood stove to heat your tent out in the back country. Light Outdoors makes these stoves in two different sizes and two different lengths. This size is a regular size stove. It's gonna be eight inches wide. They also make an XL version, which is a little bit larger. It's gonna be, I think, 12 inches wide. The larger stove is gonna hold more wood. It's gonna heat a larger tent. It's also gonna have a longer burn time. The two different lengths that they have in stoves is gonna be 12 inches and 18 inches. So everything you're gonna see in this video is a regular size stove, 12 inches long. This is what this stove looks like when it's packed up for travel. You've got these two different packages. One's gonna be the stove body and also the six foot stove pipe. Those are all in here. This one's gonna have each end piece, the back end, the front end. It's also gonna have all the accessories and pieces needed to assemble the stove. So a little bit earlier, I weighed these things out. They came in right around 1.9 pounds as advertised. And you can see, not very big for a stove that is literally a wood stove heating your tent. These little packages don't take up much room. Typically, this is gonna go in one of my drink holders on the side of my pack, latched in like that. This I just stuff in wherever available, typically on top. Let's dive in, take these things apart, see what all comes in them, and we'll put this stove together real quick. Let's get everything out here on the table so we can put this stove together. In this first package, like I said, you're gonna have the stove body as well as the six foot long stove pipe. The reason I'm using a six foot long stove pipe is because my tent is five feet, two inches high. The stove sits one foot off the ground and you typically want your pipe to sit around two feet, 20 to 22, 24 inches above the tent. All right, so now that this package is open, inside, we've got the three stabilizing bars, or they used to be turnbuckles on the light outdoor stoves, but now they have these springs on it, which make them really easy. We've also got the stove body, and if we look inside here, let me go this way, there we go. There is the stove pipe. This is the stove body. It's held together by these two rings. We'll take it apart here in a second. Now in this other package, let's get this open. We've got a lot of hardware. So here are the four legs and then the rings for the stove body. I'll set those right here. Actually, let me set those up here. We have the stove pipe accessories. So we've got spark arrestor in here. We've got the damper. We've got one little ring for every six inches of stove pipe. So we can assemble that here in a second. Then we've got the two end pieces. This is the back end with holes for the legs. And then this is the uh, front piece with holes for the legs as well. We'll screw that in here in a second. When you look at the front, you've got adjustments for air and then this big door for wood. This thing really allows huge pieces of wood to be put in. So the first thing we're gonna do is put the stove body together. So I don't need these parts and pieces. I'm gonna set them to the side. I will need these three uh, bars and I'm going to need the uh, legs and the supports for the body. So I'm going to set this front piece aside for now. And if you look inside here, you can just see how well used that is already. And I'm going to take the uh, back piece, turn it over and set it down. So 
couple things, guys. We're using titanium foil here. Because I've fired this thing in so many times, it's gonna go into shape very easily and I can do this with my bare hands. If this stove was new and you have never used it before, you'd wanna be using gloves or something to protect your hands because this is titanium foil and it will slice you right open. Hopefully, I didn't just jinx myself. So we'll take these restriction bands off and just let this come open. Here's our stove pipe. We're gonna set that to the side. So once you fire these things in, guys, they want to go into shape on their own. If you look at these two little dents, this is from my initial firing of the stove. I had the pipe on the first time I fired it. My suggestion for you guys would be fire this thing up with no stove pipe on the first time. And then after you've fired the body into place, put the stove pipe on, fire that in. Take the stove body. You can see that the uh, pipe holes at the back, there's notches for these little feet holes. So we're gonna just set this in place and work it around the base. All right, now that we have this put together, what we can do is take these rings and let me open this up. But we've got these four rings for the stove body and I'm gonna go ahead and put these over right now. Okay, now that we have those four rings on, we wanna take the front piece, the end piece for the front side. We're gonna start with one leg hole over here and then work it around until everything fits. Okay, there we go. So now that we have both end pieces, we're gonna start putting those turnbuckles on. I'm gonna start with the bottom. I'm gonna put a single bar on the bottom. I'm gonna put the top two on right now, then we can move on to the legs. Okay, now that all these support bars are here, or now that they're all attached, I should say, the stove is pretty much together. We wanna to put the four legs on and they just screw into these little holes. It's like little all thread bars. But they're just going to go right here in these leg holes, so let's screw these in. I'll put all four in and we'll stand it up. So with the legs attached, we can go ahead and stand this thing up. And what we want to do now is really even these bands out. We've got the four bands, but we want to roll them down and get them all even throughout the body of the stove. So now that we've got these bands pretty much where we want them, the last thing to do here is to really put one of these bars on each side of the pipe hole. There's a couple reasons, two reasons. One is there's a damper in that pipe that's gonna sit on these two bars that keeps the weight off the body of the stove and it allows that pipe to sit up where it needs to be. Two is this is your cooking surface. You can put your bowls and your cups right on these two bars, heat water up right here to cook. Okay, so this stove is functional, put together. Let's put the stove pipe together and we'll talk about use. Lots of people ask me about the stove pipe. Well, this is the stove pipe. It rolls up a little bit bigger than a Nalgene bottle, but not much, it doesn't weigh a whole lot. What's cool about this is the first time you put this thing together and try to roll it up into its pipe form, it's very difficult. In fact, I needed three people to do it. Thankfully, my wife and son were able to help. Once you get this thing in shape and you burn it in the first time, it wants to go back in that shape, and I'll show you right now. What you do, though, basically is just roll this thing out, and it's going to snap into place wanting to go into form. Once you have this pipe rolled out into place like this, all you need to do is put these steel bands on every six inches, you roll them down, being careful not to cut yourself. Then once we get all 12 on, we'll look at each end piece and how we close this pipe up. How cool is this? You get a fully functioning wood stove, you get a six foot stove pipe that's not segmented that you have to piece together. It's one solid piece. 
less than two pounds. They go into those two little packages. They don't weigh anything in your pack, so you can carry them wherever and then set up, have a nice hot wood stove to heat up and dry gear off when you're out in the field. Pretty cool. When we look at the stove pipe here, like I said, there's a spark arrestor that goes into the stove itself. One thing I've done a couple times is I've knocked this out with big pieces of wood when I was trying to load this up. So you do have to be careful. You also have a damper. When it's hanging straight down, it's wide open. When you have it closed, it's gonna be horizontal. And you can you know, close it and open it to varying degrees for control. We'll talk about that here in a second. The door to this stove, look at this. It's huge. You can stick tons of wood in here, giant pieces of wood as well. So if you get a nice bed of coals and you load wood in here, the longest I've ever had burn time is probably around two to three hours. And I mean, after three hours, there were still coals that were hot in the bottom of it. It's not going to burn all night. This thing is not going to uh, last you all night without having to restoke it. But it's nice to have, right? You're going to have a few hours of heat. You might have to wake up every few hours or you bring a really nice sleeping bag and you don't have to worry about it. Now, other than damper, the only other control you have is air intake, which is right here. You can close it completely, open it all the way, anything in between. So you've got an air intake control. You've got a damper for the air out. When you light these things up, guys, it takes a little while to heat the system up. This pipe has to get hot and start drawing air up. Heat rises, right? So it's gonna draw that air up and out of the stove, sucking oxygen in through the front. Takes a little bit of time for that to happen. When you first get kindling going and you start this thing up, there may be some smoke that comes out into the tent. Once it heats up, it's gonna draw and start sucking that air and smoke out of the tent. So don't freak out if there's a little bit of smoke at first, you might have to open a tent flap and definitely, any teepee that has a stove jack for use with a stove like this should have ventilation at the top. You should always have proper ventilation when using these because of course there's inherent danger when you have a wood burning stove inside of a tent. So there's two controls. You've got the damper on top, which controls how much air is going out. It also controls how much heat is staying in. If you have this thing wide open and it's just blazing, it'll burn through wood and you'll see that heat going right up through the pipe. You can slow that down with the damper and almost feel the heat radiate inside the tent when you do that. And it's gonna be keeping heat in, retaining it, also slowing the burn down on that wood so it lasts longer. If you go too far with it, you could snuff it out. There could be no oxygen, at which point it might be poofing in the, you know, out back into the tent, and that's not a good thing either. So you're gonna have to learn how to tinker with these. But it gets very doable and usable once you've played around with it a little bit. The front air intake, guys, I'll tell you right now, this thing sucks so much air, you don't typically need this thing wide open unless you're down to the coals. I've heard a complaint online, and I've talked about it before, and it's, it's this, this stove, when you first started getting going and it starts drawing air, people will have it start puffing smoke into the tent and doing a type deal where it's like wobbling and poofing smoke out. A lot of people online are telling folks that, oh, it's not getting enough air. You need to give it more air, more oxygen, or maybe drill holes in the, in the uh, door to give it more air wrong you don't need more air guys it needs less air so if it starts doing that and puffing or shaking you just want to close this i mean you don't need but a crack open sometimes and if you limit that airflow all of a sudden it's going to burn a lot smoother so there's two things you're controlling the air in and the air out at night guys i, I think i mentioned it earlier but the longest i've ever had burn time for this thing is just about three hours I had a bunch of coals going from burning the stove for a few hours. Before I went to bed, I put two really big pieces of wood in, and three hours later, I woke up to use the restroom, and there were still hot coals in there. In fact, I didn't have to relight the stove. I just threw some more wood in and got it going right again. The tent I am using, I can't remember the dimensions exactly, but it's five feet, two inches tall. I think it's about 10 feet by 11 feet. It's not quite a square. It's about a rectangle, but almost square. And this little stove heats it no problem. The coldest I ever slept this year with this thing is about 18 degrees Fahrenheit. Inside the tent, easily 65 to 70 degrees Fahrenheit on a slow and steady burn once it was up and going. The nice thing is in the morning, you can also heat water by putting your cup right on top, make your coffee, make oatmeal very easily right in your tent here uh, with your stove. So let's talk any cons or downs really in, in 
I don't have any, right? So I hot tank camping right now is almost a fad. It seems like everyone has a dream of going out and hot tank camping. I started out by making my own stove out of coffee cans, something pretty common. People try to make their own, eventually buy into a real one like this. This again, Light Outdoors. I'll have a link in my description uh, for the website. Not an affiliate. I don't get any kickbacks, but they are an awesome company out of Alberta. There's a guy, I think his name is Brennan, who makes these things. Really, really cool. These, though, for me were a dream. I had this dream of hot tank camping, you know, having all this gear on my back in the middle of a snowstorm and just finding a cool little spot with a little shelter, throwing my tent up, getting the stove going, drying my gear out as I read a book in 70 degrees as outside it just stormed and raged, right? Just a cool little dream. And of course, reality is never the same. Reality is always grittier than what we dream. However, it's fun to have these. And when I say reality is grittier, it's not going to heat the, the tent all night. You've got to either keep stoking it or have a nice sleeping bag and good sleep system that's going to keep you warm without the stove. Number two is there's extra work. When you're putting a stove together and you have to have think, and you have to think logistically about putting the time in to get that set up, you have short days and long nights in the wintertime. You've got to think ahead a little bit. You've got to put extra time in, and then you've got to gather wood. One thing I'll say is these things can burn wood, and you'll go through a lot of it. So you've got to stack and prepare ahead of time to enjoy the comfort of this stove fully. One other con to think about, and it's not a con really, but in the springtime here in the mountains, lightning is a big issue right? It's March right now. I've already made a decision that I've made my last trip with this setup this year. I won't do it again until, well, not this year, but this season. And I'm not going to put this thing together again until fall, maybe hunting season when the snows return and there is no lightning. Here in the springtime, lightning is very common. You don't want to be hiking late into the day. It can be dangerous. And I can't imagine having a seven foot metal tube sticking into the air would help. So this is not something I'm going to use in the springtime or the summertime. Of course, I don't need the heat, but also the lightning danger. The first time I set this thing up, all I could think about was if a lightning storm comes, I'm taking this down quickly because that would just be a just an explosion in the tent I don't need. Hey, thank you guys very much for watching this review. I appreciate it. We're indoors a little bit more than normal right now, but I think that's uh, for the good of all. I appreciate you guys watching. Thank you very much. Stay safe out there. See you soon. Bye.